Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, for those of you who are new here, my name is Rowan Garlow and I'm a trauma recovery practitioner. And Jared is also a um, therapist who works with a lot of individuals um, with PTSD and all kinds of different trauma. And he and I are, oh my gosh, what's happening with my voice? He and I are switching um, sessions with each other so that you can get a feel for what it would be like to work with myself or with him. And in the first part of this, he held me in a process and kind of showed us some of the tools and how he works as a practitioner. And so today um, we're just going to show you a process with me working with him. So is there anything that you want to, if you want to introduce yourself, I didn't do a very good job at the beginning, but uh, if you want to introduce yourself. Oh, yeah, it's pl pleasure to be here. Uh, really one of the things that is important to me as, as a, a therapist who works with trauma and with attachment issues, it's, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of disparity between sort of the, the, the body oriented neuroaffective sorts of methods as opposed to, to standard talk therapy. And I, and I love that we can uh, sort of demonstrate this and, and be a little vulnerable and show how it works as, as we uh, work with each other. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad that you said that. Yeah, we want to really just demonstrate what it really feels like and looks like because it's one thing to make understand this or to to be trained in it or um, it's an it's another thing to kind of watch the magic of it unfold and what that looks like. So yeah, so today um, <clears throat> Jared had shared with me. We kind of talked a little bit before we started recording that he was thinking about something that he wanted to work with. Um, and if you just want to explain what you had said to me, because typically, right, if somebody comes into a practitioner, sometimes they'll have an idea about where they want to start with because something's not going right. Or there's, um, there's someone that some part of the system that's like, this is, this could go better. And so, um, sometimes people don't have an idea, but, uh, in your case, do you want to just share kind of what your train of thought was and what was happening? And then we'll, we'll just go from there. Sure. I mean, my initial thought was, I have this tendency to stack thing upon thing upon thing to to make sure that I'm really, you know, it, doing stuff and busy. And then a lot of times I'm pushing against that to avoid just being buckled under. And so, and 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 then I end up suddenly not feeling productive. And uh, there's this deeper set thing that came out when I was doing a similar thing, just uh, swapping modalities with a friend to kind of demonstrate what we do for each other. And uh, it's, it's there's this kind of underlying fear of sort of the, the, the accountability of, of what I've done with my life is death approaches. And uh, it's, there, was, there was such an intense charge with that, even now as I reflected, but you know, before our meeting, that I thought, okay, <laughs> whether or not there's a straight connection to, to my uh, productivity issue, uh, there, there seems to be a connection to a lot of stuff. And this seems to be like a winner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so what we had talked about was that it feels like these two things are related, um, but that the thing with the most charge is what have I done with my life? Because um, when this fear of death had come up, there's this thing that's behind it that you said it was like, ooh, it was like this tension. And, and just as you were talking about it, what was coming up in your body? Like, what, what did you notice? The, the first thing I noticed was a, a feeling in the chest that went very, very deep, kind of kind of right right here above the gut. And then uh, I can I can feel just this emanating pressure rising up to the sort of the collarbone area, and it's 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 more close to the surface of my skin. If I were to locate it, yeah, it's right there, closer to the surface of your skin. So is it is it okay to just hang out with that for just a second? Yeah, I'll stay with it. Okay, and we'll just be curious together about you know what this this sensation might be doing, what it might do. Yeah, I, I can feel a uh, tension rising into the jaw and like this shivery feeling that keeps like uh, an unstable sort of shivery sensation up in my shoulders. Yeah, so let's just let that be here. Let's just let that energy rise up the way that it wants to and, and let that shivering go through. Hmm, and then noticing that kind of, yeah. I think I'm hitting pay dirt here. You're getting what? hitting pay dirt, <laughs> hitting, hitting the good stuff. Um, I don't have a specific thought coming, but oh my goodness, the intensity of the emotion coming through. Um, it's definitely a weeping feeling. Yeah. 
yeah. and it's a lot. Yeah, so let's just let that be here. That's obviously here for a reason. This is the absolute right thing to be feeling right now. Absolutely the right feeling. And just it's amazing rarity, really, to, to be able to have this done for me. Well, you really deserve that. It's like, well, one part of me is ready to just sob. There's another part that is inviting it to really push through another channel. Kind of not, not too different than when I feel to like cry but know that it's socially inappropriate and uh and then that part there's another part that pushes up saying hey let it let it dry up for a minute we can get to it later but at the same time it's like yeah i'm feeling some of it i'm feeling the defensive response cu coming up and just kind of saying hey let's 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 hold the hold off for a minute bro and i'm just thinking i don't know that i need to hold off uh right here bro but it's it's uh it's 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 still an important part that's kind of pushing back we can just ask that part you know what would happen if we really did uh let go what were we afraid? Right. yeah i'll ask that part <laughs> it says in, in in straight english it says you you look like an ass yeah and then what happens if you look like an ass uh, your credibility would be shot and I mean, rationally, I'm thinking, no, it 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 wouldn't. But then, on on the feeling level, that's what that's that's what comes through. You know, it's like you're you're trying to hold on to your credibility while you're doing this thing. You're trying to be vulnerable, but you need to you need to not show it all. Yeah, yeah. So we can just honor that that part that's coming up that's saying, if I show all of this, then it's gonna I'm gonna lose credibility because that's the world that that heart lives in it really feels like that the, the fear of the judgment or that this somehow makes you less or you know you know your your willingness to validate that uh it's, it's it was interesting because the physiological like i could feel this relaxation in my shoulders you know it's like suddenly this this part's like cool <laughs> it's like it hits you with this later bro but cool <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So let's just invite that sensation in, that relaxation in the shoulders. Just really let that be there. Yeah, it's like this, uh, where, where there was the rising tension, there's this spreading mm -hmm. openness uh, with still little spurts of emotion coming through that are like, it feels like such a safe level of, of kind of sadness that comes up behind it, up to my, my head and eyes. But then this openness that's just kind of spreading. And if I really pay attention to it, I can also feel this warmth and tingling down through my legs. Mm. Uh, and it's uh, this sort of ongoing, just it's waves of feeling just coming back. So let's just kind of let your focus and your attention just go back and forth really gently between those different awarenesses in the body relaxation in the shoulders, the tingling in the lower half, and then these spurts of, yeah, these like spurts of really safe emotion that want to come up. It's like it's safe for more of it to come through now. like an intensity that I don't have to hate. It's like a sadness that I don't have to stop. Yes. And also, it's that deep. It really is that deep. Your ability to feel it, that, that well goes that deep. It's living in you. 
Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's there's a rightness to it. It's it's like it's uh, consistent with some of my like re religious and philosophical convictions. You know, it's like it fits. It just fits. Are there any like images or um, colors or anything that come along with this feeling that's in your body? <sighs> with the feeling. It's it's curious you ask because it seems like there's 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 hidden images that they keep being keep being blocked before they come up in the like just my visual field. But then when it comes to just focusing in on the feeling, uh, there's this this sort of image of an open space, uh, sort of like a clear space forming within me. It's like in the middle of a sort of a dark cave where there's where there's this clear open space for air for movement like it's just supposed to be there but the cave is still just this dark open cave that has this open space within it just like a safe space yeah like a safe space so let's just let our awareness really hone in on that safe space just to breathe I can feel the um, like an emanating sensation. There's that safe open space, and then as I really pay attention to it, uh, there's 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 sort of this this feeling of uh, like partial release that comes up through the, the the back end of my spine. I can feel it coming up to my head to this structure back here, the back of my head, and uh, the jaw kind of intermittently goes a little tight and lets go. Yeah, so let's just focus on the jaw right there, that little bit of release and tension that's happening. We'll just let that take place. Any little movements that want to come through. Good testing. Your body knows. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Really, really intelligent body. Be curious and just watch it as it does its thing. Yeah, there's heat, uh, good heat, heat. Uh, that goes that moves down through the body while I focus on it. Yeah, and this sort of like I can hear the sort of like sort of a cracking sound in the fascial <laughs> thing going on in here as the the muscles work with me. Yeah, as the muscles work with you, and those muscles, what does it feel like they're getting ready? Does it feel like they're getting ready to do something or? Kinda, it's, 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 um, it's a real internal slight movement, but it's, it's like a, it's like a readjusting and straightening of the spine, an, el an elongation, like something that had been cramped and shut mm. is, is just saying, yeah, get, give me the room to lift right here, boss, right here, you know, and it's lifting up. And then there's this, um, there's ongoing just a release well down through my legs and uh and I can feel this uh this lighter sensation out in my hands where the the usual patterns of like discharge will flow nice nice and it's way lighter now it's like this this next wave that last wave there just like it's like it's reached another level of completion before you know whatever else comes back and it's like now I feel like I can look at someone like I had like I've, I've often heard about and I've seen it where people feel the need to like look at another face and now I can see you you know yeah so you notice that you're you kind of came back out into the world around you a little bit yeah that's a great way of putting it it it, it feels like that it's like okay I'm ready to connect mm -hmm. I remember once somebody once telling me in a hospital right now I can't people I can't do the people thing, you know? And I was thinking like, yeah, right now I can people. Totally. Well, when we're, um, when our, we're, our nervous system is all jacked up and stuff, it totally brings us in because we're like, whoa, what's happening in here? And then that social engagement comes back online and we're like, oh, okay. Ooh, wow. What's just happened? Where did I just popped out of a, 
It just popped out of somewhere. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, well said. <laughs> so just noticing right now, just as we're chatting and what's going on, you know, how you're, how that's landing and how you, how's your body feeling right now? It, in, in, in the forefront, uh, there, there's this feeling of openness, uh, sort of a freedom, a real feeling of freedom. And then uh, behind it, there's this sort of feeling of vulnerability, kind of like disclosure vulnerability right after I've told something, uh, some, something some, somebody something that's kind of hard to talk about. It's like there's this feeling of vulnerability, like, are, are you going to watch out for me? You know, are, are you going to are you going to protect me so that I don't I don't deal with more than I can deal with right now? And it's like, I kind of feel to let that part know, like, it's, it's all right. We're only going to take this as far as we're ready to take it right now. And, and if you got more to tell, if there's more that we can work on later, we can work on it later, you know? 100%. Yeah. And I love that you from your center self are really talking to that part and hearing it and like, no, yeah, we don't have to, just as much as we want, just as much as we're ready for. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me, like, I, I think about how relieved people will often look when I let them know, you don't have to tell me this thing that you don't feel you can tell me yet. You mm -hmm. don't have to um, take this further than you're taking it just yet. How they'll often relax and then have room to just at least take it a little further, you know, at that point. And it's so I can see how that feels. Yeah. It's so important to that, too, because... I think there's a pressure when we're in a therapeutic setting to um, maybe even please the practitioner, really just to do the good session, to give them what they want to, to maybe, and maybe if we're used to bypassing our own boundaries in situations, we might not even know like, oh, that was a little farther than what I wanted to go. And then we feel like a little tender afterwards. Like, why did I, maybe I wasn't ready to share that yet. And so it's good to be checking in and know like, we don't have to share anything that that we're not comfortable with. Right. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, I mean, and I hope, I hope this truly happens for me more, but it's a beautiful thing when somebody who was feeling really tender and a need to, to, to hide reaches this point where they say, okay, I so am ready for the goodness that's about to come. If I, if I feel the intensity of the badness right now, it's like, it's, it's like, okay, great. We're going to take this to the next level. And if it's too much, you just let me know, you know? Yeah. And, and it's good to have that safety net of the practitioner, the person that you're with to know, like, we're not going to, you know, uh, the best of the best of our ability. We're not going to let you go off the deep end. If I see, someone I'm working with or if I see it, it's like, oh, maybe this is too far, you know, but you have a relative, you have a regulated system. So I trust that your system can go there and stay present and really just needs presence to be able to go there. So, yeah. yeah. So when we, let's kind of like revisit, let's kind of go back um, and revisit some of what we were talking about in the beginning about uh, death and what my life you know, so when you talk about like, we, we, we stack, we make sure that we've got lots of things planned, that we're busy, we're doing things, we're productive so that like, what's that like for you? Is it so that my life can have like a legacy so I can leave something behind? Um, what's that feeling for you? Like what's driving some of that? You know, when it comes, when it comes to what, what drives it, I think it's it's this mingled uh, both a desire to be valuable and also when I think about just the the people who rely on me to 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 make sure that nothing will will harm them but but when it comes to what what has the highest level of charge with it it's it's my own desire to be valuable to to make good on my existence to 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 be worthy to be here and uh we can talk a good talk about self-compassion but when it comes to, to the brass tacks of operational self-compassion I, I i i can feel my own struggle with it i can feel how sometimes i'll feel it but i could feel it so much more deeply and uh and 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 it would it would uh free me up to both be productive 
and not afraid of the of the changes that could come. There's a lot of areas where I think I hold back in life because of this sort of deep set fear that I haven't fully uh, brought a, enough consciousness into to to feel that real self compassion, that real acceptance, and and I imagine that also keeps me back from from helping others who are trying to go there too. You know, and I can feel that like that struggle that keeps coming up as I as I as I go in and, and and feel like, oh yeah, on some level there's still this struggle with making good on my existence and making sure that uh, that I'm doing something valuable enough that I'm worthy to exist. You know. I, I would never put it in terms like that socially because I don't even think of it socially, but oh my gosh, does my nervous system think of it? <laughs> you know, some deep part of me. Yeah. So really what we're talking about is, is really deeply rooted because it's, it's like a, a very, 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 very early, like baby, infant, you know, existing this, the, the feeling like, am I enough as I am to just exist? That's, you know, that's at the root. So just when we say that, when we say like, maybe that wording doesn't hit right, but like some wording of that, am I enough to just, or. Oh yeah. I mean, that's wow. Rowan, you nailed it. I mean like the, you know, (laughs) as I thought back to the, to the, you know, the, the infantile, you know, like, like how, how this, this comes up early on when we start body armoring and we start doing things to develop our, you know, I just, I, I thought in my mind, oh, by the way, to deck to this part, how old are you? And, and I got a pretty clear two, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I'm two, yeah. you know, right now it's talking like an adult because, you know, we got this, this thing going, but it's, it's, I don't know what was going on at age two, and I don't even know if my if my if my brain actually is giving me accurate information if its time orientation is good. But man, you know, it's like two is two is what came up, and I and I and I feel this sort of young smallness somewhere inside there. Yeah, I wonder um, if you'd be willing to go into that two-year-old part and maybe just explore that a little bit. Sure. Okay, so let's just choose with your you're going to choose with your free will to become just a part of Jared that is this this two-year-old that came forward you know this other part of me that's telling me it's it's the the, this kind of dangerous uh I trust that this other part is gonna come right right it's already proven it's prowess I, I think that it'll come up if uh if I'm going too far, but I'm going, I'm going for Mr. Two in there. Wait, wait, wait stop. <laughs> no, no, this is a, buy. this is an override. So, cause th- this is, I was testing to see if we could get to the vulnerable part before to see like if there was something in front of it, but we don't want to go like this and then, and then wait until we've gone too far and then have the protector come in. Cause that's not going to build a good internal system. So let's, let's first, let's just, talk to who is protecting this two-year-old so let's just sure. who's going to choose to become the part of jared that's protecting this two-year-old okay so we should work with that yeah i yeah i would normally work with a protector first so let's do that we'll work with the protector all right all right so yeah we'll bring in the protector yeah so even if you can just um like move slightly in your seat, even just a little bit, one way or the other. And just really imagine your sense or feel that you're leaving Jared there. And we're just gonna talk to this protector who's standing in front of this part. Okay. All right. So so I'll just I'll just talk with the protector a bit then. So I right. would talk to the protector. Okay. If, so you're gonna be the you're going to step into the only the perspective of the protector and then I'd like to to talk to him. Okay. Okay. So I'll, so I'll, I'll get into the protector for a second here there. I I I like the idea of the physio, you know changing the physiology for him. He wants to be here. Perfect. 
And so are you the part of Jared that's protecting this two-year-old? Yeah, and I didn't expect to speak today, but uh, I'm down to talk. So if you want to talk, let's let's uh, let's do this thing, and and I'll I'll tell you if you've gone too far. Definitely. So I'm curious, like how old how old are you, and and what is your role? I'm 18, and when it comes to my role, honestly, I don't even know my role. I act when stuff comes up, and that seems to work for me. So you act when what kind of stuff comes up? Pretty much anything that looks like it's going to be too much. You know, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm here to help. I don't necessarily feel like I'm super smart or super capable or super able to help, but pardon my French, but damn it, I'm going to help when something comes up. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good. I'm really glad that you're stepping in to help. Um, are you, aware of the the part that's that you're protecting this this two-year-old you're talking about the little guy yeah i won't tell you the details it's okay you don't have to he was small he didn't know that sometimes the world could be hostile and he didn't know that sometimes he's not welcome in this world and even though that the adult can tell me that yeah he was actually welcome he didn't feel welcome <sighs> That's super painful. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to make sure that nobody hurts him. I'm going to make sure that, that the messages that get to him are the right messages so that he can know that he's safe. And, you know, I kind of think that what we're talking about is something that's going to be good for him. So I'm willing to talk to you. I just don't want him to come out right now. Yeah. That's good. You can totally just maintain that connection with him and you can let the messages that need to get through, get through. Thank you. I've done a really good job. And I'm really sorry that he was gaslit, that he was told that he belonged or that he won't, you know, and it did, but that's not really how he felt. He didn't feel like he was being understood or really seen or yeah, I mean, I really don't know how much he understands, but it, it kind of seems like people were just preoccupied. I mean, that's my perspective, but I don't think that he's that he gets that, that, that sometimes just grown-ups have a whole bunch of stuff going on in their lives, and and I just have always felt protective of him ever since I came up. Do you do you know like what was happening in his life around that time around when he was 2? I know. And I'm showing Jared's adult self what it is, Good. but I'm not going to say it. Yeah, so just I'm going to give that to Jared quietly. Yeah. That's what matters. And I hope that because of what he's doing here today, that he's going to feel it, that he's, that he's going to actually be able to finish it because this little guy is stuck huh. and I want to free him, even though I can't, because I'm not smart enough. I'm 18. You cannot. Yeah. And so I think that it would be really awesome too. And I'm going to really advocate for this, that you can be unburdened a little bit, that, that Jared can help to unburden you a little bit so that he can really connect to this two-year-old himself so you don't have to work so hard. What a relief. Yeah. This is, is, yeah. It's like it answers a question. Yeah. 
what would you what, what what's the question that it answers first i'm curious about that you know shifting back into the adult self and I, i'm really i'm going to ask the 18 year old if it's okay if i share this okay this is it's like is there a god <laughs> you know it's, it's it's curious but it's like the question is is there a god and it's like it answers like there is something bigger than me you know ah uh, yes yeah from the I'm not alone yes because that awareness is going to be the thing that comes in and and can relate to you and unburden this 18 year old self. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it unburdens this 18 year old. And so right now are you the 18 year old or did you step out into I stepped out into the adult and I can see in my mind the 18 year old who's kind of just feeling more like chill. And then I have this, this two year old who's just doing his thing. Like he doesn't even get it, you know, like he's just over there doing his thing. Okay, so let, I'm, I'm curious how there's a visual of both. So I'm going to have you just consciously, um, maybe shift a little bit back to the center as this, as you shift into the, the center self, unless there's more that, cause it seemed like you kind of came out of that part, unless there was more that, that needed to yeah okay. yeah so, <clears throat> good <clears throat> noticing you know this time what it's like to be here and to not be those energies but to be connected to them and just kind of feeling into me for a minute what it's like to not be those energies and what you can notice like you already kind of did it you were like i noticed that this 18 year old's like all right i can whew, kind of and then the two-year-old self is just not really so just but where are you at in the center what's this feeling like for you it's uh, a pleasant pleasantly surprised at because i because it really this is the kind of you know deeper connection that i always hope to to reach and it's um it's it was it was surprising the the level of intensity that whatever was so guarded finally allowed you know so because for me it's kind of gotten to the point where I'm not quite as afraid of the intense emotions as when I first started my own soulful journey, you know, back into, back into the field from being a lawyer for a while, you know, it's like, there's, and now it's, 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 it's one of those things where it's, it's like, I know there's things that I can enjoy more of in my life and it's going to take being able to reconnect more deeply. So it's not as fearsome the thing. And so, wow. I mean, I was really not, not expecting, but pleasantly surprised by, um, this this ferocious but inadequate and young protector and this this two-year-old that um I'm, I'm kind of surprised at what i saw uh but not not horribly surprised it's just as an, with an adult perspective it it kind of fits together and makes sense and it's it's something that i think that uh that i'll actually really appreciate uh enjoying whether or not my nervous system remembers exactly what the heck happened uh I think this is something I can work with. Yeah, that's awesome. And then I just want to maybe notice or have like just check in with how, how your body feels. How does your body feel different um, not being either of those energies and being in your aware ego? Sort of re relaxed, but with this sort of s strength. It's like relaxed, energetic, strong, mm. uh, present. <laughs> you know, that's what it feels like. Yeah. Wow. So one of the things that um, I was going to suggest, which you mean you have your, you know, your own processes and all that stuff that you already work with. But if this were like for somebody watching, if this were you or if this were something like be working with someone like this, what I would suggest would be um, next to work with this vulnerable part because we got some room, some wiggle room sort of integrating that protector a little bit more with the aware consciousness the aware ego and then you know going into when that person would feel comfortable or safe to um maybe a little bit more completing why that two-year-old uh broke off in the first place and so that would be like getting into the the feelings that are 
present within the two-year-old and then tra tracking that back to the original, you know, place and really resolving what, what needed to happen, what, um, yeah, what needed to happen, what didn't happen. That's completion process work and stuff, but, um, but it's good for people to see that stuff like this, like we have this idea sometimes I think like, okay, I want to get this thing done and I'm going to go in and I'm going to heal it. <laughs> and there's often so many layers of, of a person that we have to get regulated first and, and develop certain things and foundations and before we can just, you know, get in there and scoop out the most vulnerable part. Totally. That's yeah. And I, I think, I have a clearer pathway to completion than before, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, this is like my favorite part of doing this, um, is like building more of the aware ego. Cause then now, like as he goes through his life, he's going to be like, Oh, this is that I'm, I'm kind of noticing this is the two year old in this situation, or this is this 18 year old. And now I have a relationship with them. So that means that, they're not uh, just unconsciously hijacking the system. It's like, oh, we have a, we have a working relationship. We uh, we talk to each other. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's 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 one of the things that I'll often tell my clients, and is is very true for me in this scenario, is that you know the 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 the, the healthy and resilient person isn't free of you know, different parts that do their own thing. You know, if anything, it's just a greater level of integrity in, in how the parts help each other. You know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a far cry different from, uh, say, a, a, a multiple personality situation where you're no longer, not integrated yet, mm -hmm. or a situation, or, or those situations where, yeah, suddenly you just have this, this urge that's totally different than everything that matters to you, and you, you follow it. It's, it's more like a, like wow, there's this there's this part of me that 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 I'm uh, this strength within me that I can love, that I can be close to, that can love me, that gives me a feeling of being loved back, even though it's a process within me. You know, there's a there's, there's a security and a strength in that. And uh, for after doing this with you so far, it's like I just feel uh, this this appreciation for I want to say for for self, but really it's more like it feels like it's a different part of me that I've finally met. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I just want to touch on, I love what you were saying about the multiple personality disorder thing. Cause I think sometimes for people watching or for people that don't or aren't, maybe aren't as familiar with parts work or with multiple or with self multiplicities within a person, um, I think that's oh, a little strange, you know, like look at these people with multiple personality disorder, but what Jared was just describing is that the difference between these two things is that people with multiple personality disorder have very thick walls between each self um, and between their aware ego and those selves. Whereas a person who is a conscious, you know, we're, we're waking up, we're becoming aware of these things, um, the walls are, are thinner. So now we have these distinct selves um, and, and they're all working with what they're really good at. They're self-righteous. They believe that the world should be the way that they want it to be. But then... <clears throat> we're not closed off from them. So it's not like uh, we're losing chunks of time because that actually happens even to people who don't have multiple personality disorder because everyone has multiple personality disorder. But people are losing, you know, suddenly their per their workhorse part takes over and then they come out of it and they're like, they might not even remember what happened because that they're suddenly in a different self. I um, mean, the more awareness that we have, it's like we're present when it's happening and we get to choose and it's... Uh, yeah. So anyways, love talking about that stuff. <laughs> well, it was definitely a, a pleasure doing this with you today, Rowan. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's great to, to work with a fellow practitioner on it. Thank you so much for trusting me and for doing this. This was so much fun. So thanks for coming. Bye, everybody. <laughs>